few. Um, I just a couple. I've never heard of inheritance tax free ISAs. Can you expand on them? Um, so the question is, I've, the person has asked. I've got no idea what inheritance tax free ISAs are, and uh, can I can I expand on 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 that? Um, so, I mean, that the the underlying legislation is um, business relief. So business relief has been going on since the 1970s, actually. It was um, a way of really, at the start, it was family companies, family companies, so allow companies to pass through the generations uh, without having to pay death duties. Uh, that was business relief. But it massively expanded over the years, over the 80s, 90s. Um, and now it and now portfolios and fund managers have built up big portfolios of investments that qualify for business relief. And in 2013, those assets, those companies were allowed to be invested into an ISA. So that was the big change really from 2013 onwards. So we've had a good, you know, over 10 years now of ISAs that can be potentially be inheritance tax free. Um, and so these portfolios one of the main objectives is to grow those portfolios as an investment in their own right. Um, they tend to invest in companies mainly on the alternative investment market, uh, which is really the market of choice for smaller growing companies. And as I said, you can invest in a portfolio of these companies that qualify for business relief and the, and the performance has been extraordinary over the last 10 years. <clears throat> if, you, if you've got a long, longer long enough time frame um there's been a bit difficult short-term performance issues just because of the economy over the last year or two but if you've got a long-term perspective it's likely that you'll get a better performance you know over the longer term because smaller companies have that potential growth much more than kind of bigger companies um mm. you still have access to the isa so you can still sell, you can still use the money at any time in the future, whether that's for gifting or for holidays or whether it's for care costs in the future. You can, it's still your money, it's still your investment. So you've not got that kind of difficulty of um, having difficult trust work or making that decision of how much do I gift or how much do I put money into a complicated legal trust structure. It's just basically an ISA that invests in investments and companies um, that qualify for business relief, so inheritance tax free after two years. Um, we tend to, we're completely independent, so we tend to recommend a diversified split of different providers, but a lot, lot of them have got really great long track records. Um, I have done a couple of videos on this, so um, if you can search through uh, some of the archive, you'll probably get some more information on them, or, just, or, if, or if this is of interest, just get in touch and we can have kind of a, have an initial meeting just to see you know um whether you know whether the um this is this is the right thing for you really um a market's performance has been terrible over the last uh, few years um so the comment the comment here is that the um the a market has is performed poorly over the last few years um whilst that is true what i would say is that the aim market has absolutely everything on it so it has every company um whether they're good poor indifferent um basically the in you would never invest in the aim index um you have this is where active fund management really um adds value because you only really want to invest in certain companies that are profit make profitable uh the bigger companies within the A market, the growing companies. And so this is why we do a lot of due diligence and research into, into uh, the fund managers to make sure that they're doing their job and picking the companies that have really great long-term growth potential. So don't ever look at the AIM index. It's got all, all sorts of rubbish, garbage that you'd never invest in. Um, always look at the performance figures of um, the, the actual fund managers that are picking from that um from that uh, universe of companies. Because remember, it's not just um, the companies, they also make sure that the companies that they're investing are qualifying for business relief as well. Um, because that's you know one of the main reasons why we're investing. So we only recommend uh, um, AIM ISA portfolios that have got a great track record 
of at least five years, if not 10 years of performance. And by the way, the performance is absolutely amazing over the long term. You know, what's happened is over the last year or two is that with inflation running a mark and interest rates going up, smaller companies have just been hit that little bit harder than the more mainstream, what's deemed less risky assets, you know, bonds and government yields and um, bigger companies, basically. So the, the, the money of institutions and investments have generally flown out of what's deemed the higher risk um, assets. But as soon as that money f- starts flowing back, you know, those portfolios will really come back. Um, and uh, so that's that's good to know. Um, in fact, the companies within the portfolios are actually doing really well. There's been no changes at all to how profitable, how, how the growth of some of the underlying companies. It's just that some of the institutional money has moved to less risky assets over the last year or two. And what we're telling clients is that the value at this, the relative valuations now are absolute bargain prices, probably not bargain prices not seen since the 2008 you know credit crisis so for anybody investing now is getting portfolio of companies at absolute bargain prices so um, don't let the last year or two put you off Um, it's always best to invest when things are low um, and not when things are a high i know that's difficult but it's best to invest low sell high if you possibly can that's what we're telling our clients and um yeah just just you know we can take you through the information um make sure it's right for you uh, in, in terms of your circumstances but to go back to your original question um don't ever look at the aim index because that's just not um not uh, a reliable metric for looking at the investment portfolios that invest in companies which happen to be on the aim market if you see what i mean but if you have any any more doubts just just book a meeting and i'll do what i'll do is do another webinar just on aim isa investments and i'll take people through the the performance figures of that <clears throat> um thank you thank you no problem Thank you. Um, just one final question: How much does it cost for initial meeting? Um, well, there's no 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 cost for the initial meeting with ourselves. Um, the the first meeting meeting is pretty relaxed, really. In our we have a living room style office um, in Westbury on the High Street. I'm sure you've you've seen us if you're local, and uh, it's just a relaxed discussion chat, really, where you can ask us more questions. We'll get to know you. Um, and then at the end of that meeting, we, we get a good feel for whether we can help you or not. If not, we, we, we've got trusted partners that we can signpost you to, or if you don't feel that we're the right firm for you, that's absolutely fine. Um, it's just, we're very much um, proponents of face-to-face. We still like to get that energy, that feel that we really get to know you uh, and your family. So um, it really starts with that initial meeting to kind of really properly get to know us um and and then we can go from there so if there's no other further questions i know we went on a bit of a tangent there with inheritance tax free ISAs. um but as i said tax year end is coming up fast so um try to um take on board some of those allowances and exemptions that you can do before tax year end if you do need any advice definitely get in touch quite quickly for an initial meeting so we can kind of get things progressed again before tax year end and remember we're going into a new tax year next year um, you don't have to leave things to tax year end so by all means book a meeting in the new tax year if you're looking to do things um, tax efficiently uh, and keep one eye on the budget as well tomorrow um, what i'll do as i said i'll put something out next week that you can kind of look, in, look at to summarize the announcements of tomorrow so Again, thank you very much for joining me here today. Much appreciated. Um, If you're watching this on YouTube, press that like and subscribe button because it just allows us to get out to more people, get this information out to people, to get people paying less tax. Okay, nice to see you all and we'll hopefully see you again um, next week. Okay, thank you again. Bye-bye. Bye.